This is my router table. I built it as an extension wing of my table saw. It's a 15 amp Porter cable router in an Incra lift, and I love this thing. The only problem is dust. Lots and lots of dust. So today I'm going to build a box to enclose it so I can hook up my dust collector and maybe even reduce some of the noise. I'm also going to wire up the safety switch on the outside of the box so I can turn it off with just the bump of my hand or even my knee. So the first thing I did was lower the router all the way down to the bottom before I measured. I measured the router but I just rounded off to the nearest inch for my dimensions. I'm not getting too technical for the drawings on this project. It is just a plywood box, so I think a post-it note will do just fine. I had a bunch of other scraps of plywood left over from other projects, so I was stoked to have just the right reason to use them all up. Gotta love that pocket hole jig for quick and easy joinery, especially for plywood boxes. Thanks to a little video magic, apparently the box just assembled itself. Here I'm just checking the fit of the access door. So here's the root of the first mistake I made on this project. I'm trying to put screws into the edge of this plywood, and I should have known that that drill bit needed to be just barely smaller than the threads on the screw. That extra 30 second of an inch did actually come back to bite me on the ass, and I realized it right about here. Split. But here's the thing about woodworking. If it teaches you anything, it's to just fix your problems and move on. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I'm just gonna drill a slightly bigger hole and fix it later. thing about a split like this is what you have on the inside is actually just face grain to face grain contact and that's where wood glue actually works the best anyway. So this may not exactly be pretty but it's probably going to be stronger than it was out of the factory. Like every woodworker should I do have a really nice set of chisels. This just isn't one of them. Problem solved. And I was just starting to feel pretty good about it. And then this happened. I feel like life is short enough without any kind of respiratory problems. So and whenever I see another woodworking doing any kind of power sanding without dust collection, it just makes my skin crawl. My setup is pretty simple. It's just a Bosch random orbit sander and I've permanently attached the vacuum hose and even zip tied the cord to it. And it works great. By the way, these little remote switches are only about 10 bucks during the holiday season at Home Depot. I found that if you're going to paint plywood, you can completely hide the edge grain and all the voids with just a little putty. I like using this stuff because it dries so fast that if you use a thin coat, you can usually sand it after just about 10 or 15 minutes. And here's another little tip. Buy a big box of popsicle sticks and put them in your shop. 
I use them as disposable putty knives, stir sticks, spacers, shims, dividers, splines, glue spreaders, levelers. If you cut the tip off with a pair of wire cutters, you get a straight or angled edge. And if you twist one, you get a sharp point that's great for precision work, or even a toothpick in a pinch. But you should never run out of toothpicks in your shop. The next thing I'm going to do is use this trim to line the inside corners of my router box. I'm hoping it'll keep dust from building up in the corners and even increase airflow a little bit. I get a lot of questions about the chop saw bench and fence system that I built, but I'm going to be doing a full video just on that pretty soon. So this is me checking the length of the nails to make sure that they're short enough so they won't go all the way through the box, which is a great idea in theory. I really shouldn't have any problems as long as I angle the gun back properly. For the safety trolls though, I do keep my fingers out of the way regardless of my confidence. The trim pieces in the front of the box had to be cut a little bit shorter to fit under that top rail support thingy, whatever you want to call it. So here I'm taking the front trim pieces and pushing them flush up against the door, but I'm only attaching them to the sides of the box. Something I just wanted to mention, this is actually my first YouTube video ever, and until I hit the upload button today, I was just a fan. I feel like I owe it to all the other creators out there that have been putting in the hard work to make these videos, to shout out some serious respect. You've been nothing but a steady source of inspiration for myself and the rest of the world. And after this first little video, I have a whole new appreciation for what it takes to actually film yourself while you build something. Woodworking takes a pretty high level of concentration just by itself. And when you film yourself building something, you're actually creating two things at the same time, the project and the video. And I think this simple little plywood box probably took about six times longer than it would have if I didn't have a camera roll. So speaking of trying to create two things at the same time, I was actually just reviewing this footage when I noticed those two little bumps on the left side of the screen. Okay, so more putty. So I used a nail set to uh, punch down those little nails that I blew out the side of the box. And another thing that I learned today is that when you start to get frustrated, your camera angles just tend to get worse and worse. So this is the two and a half inch dust port that I'm gonna attach to the side of the box for connecting my dust collector. You can get these at any specialty woodworking store or a variety of sources online. I'm just gonna measure it, mark it, and cut the hole before I paint. The next stroke of genius that I had that didn't work out quite so well was to use a scrap of plywood, the same thickness as the bottom of the box, to align the bottom of the dust collector port with the inside floor of the box. I figured if I took this whole saw and angled it back, I would get an elongated angled hole that actually matched the inside of the dust collector port. I was careful to only put pressure in the center of the bit until it had dug in enough to safely drill through the rest of the hole.
and it actually worked pretty well. So this hook and loop sanding block uses the same sanding discs as my random orbit sander, and it's probably one of the most used tools in my whole shop. So between designing, building, filming, designing, building, filming, I realized my next mistake and it was time to fix it. I had failed to account for the fact that the base of the dust collection port was not at the same point as the hole on the inside. I just got lucky in the fact that the flange on the dust collector port was big enough to cover my mistakes. It should go without saying that alcohol and power tools just don't mix. However, it's been a long day and I'm about to paint. So believe it or not, I actually went to Home Depot and picked up a DeWalt tool off the shelf and said, match this paint. And the guy at the paint counter even labeled it DeWalt yellow for me. So sorry to keep you hanging, but I'll definitely wrap this project up in the next video. I decided to use this seemingly simple little woodshop project as the subject for my first video. But I usually build things like furniture, jewelry boxes, and things for the house. If you want to get a better idea of what to expect for my future videos, the best place to look is my Instagram account at Weber Woodshop. If there was anything at all you liked about this video and you want to encourage me to make more, the best way to do that is to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you later.